You weren't expecting this, were ya? Welcome back to another Geek Watch video. And today I'm going to be discussing AMD's new report, AMD's new statement about AMD Polaris 10 and Polaris 11. Now everyone thought, oh my god, Polaris 10 and Polaris 11 are going to be like incredibly high end and we're going to get insane performance and all that good stuff. But AMD have actually said that Polaris 10 and 11 won't actually be for the highest end of components and I'm going to talk about that in a minute and while that isn't necessarily a bad thing and whilst the performance might not actually be as low as you may think so make sure to stay tuned drop a like rating and subscribe but let's get into today's GeekerWatt video. So let's break this down to two parts Polaris 10 and Polaris 11. Now Polaris 11 is aimed at the, at the, the notebook market so the small form factor high performing laptop market a notebook is just a laptop that does a bit beefed up shall we say not gaming laptops by any means but notebooks polaris 10 however is what we care about we don't care about polaris 11 that's just laptops we're not we're not laptop people polaris 10 will target the mainstream gpu market and the high-end gaming notebook market so that's where your gaming notebooks come in now this says a couple of things and i'm going to sort of go over uh, my opinions on these in just a moment's time so why necessarily isn't this a bad thing? Now, just because something is mainstream doesn't mean the performance is going to be bad. It may be that the mainstream graphics cards, and I would classify mainstream as sort of below $450, below $400, below about £500. That's what I would classify it as. But no, sorry, the other way around, below $500 and below about £400, £450. That's what I would classify mainstream as. Now, this doesn't mean that Polaris isn't going to kick ass performance-wise. It just means that it's going to be affordable to the masses. It does mean we probably aren't going to see the Fury X performance for half the price because profits have to be made. We all know that, and that's just, that's just a state of fact. However, having it aimed at the mainstream is probably a lot better for the majority of us because even if AMD don't bring out a card that will compete with their Fury X or Nvidia's 980 Ti and Titan X, does that really matter? Because a lot of us, well, 95% of us aren't going for those high-end cards and they only make those high-end cards for the enthusiasts, the enthusiasts of the enthusiasts. They make larger profits on those higher-end cards because people are prepared to pay more. Now, having a mainstream card and developing the mainstream is what AMD has always been for. AMD has always gone you know what you're the consumer and we like you and we want to give you something you can afford and something you deserve and something you like and that's what we need that's what people can't seem to contemplate and can't seem to get their head around that that is what we need we want more development in the mainstream target i don't care if there's a new titan x that performs five percent better with anti-aliasing because i'm not buying a titan x i haven't got a thousand pounds a thousand dollars to spend on a titan x and neither of you, well, one one of you might, but neither of you. So driving development in this mainstream market is going to be a really, really key move. Because for me, the 970 is bordering on mainstream and bordering on high end. The 960 is bordering on low end and bordering on mainstream. So NVIDIA, they need something between the 960 and the 970 to fill the gap. Not necessarily a 965, but they need something in the middle to fill the gap. And AMD are going to come along, according to their statement, and fill that gap. Because NVIDIA... They're getting lazy. We can see that they haven't needed to release a GPU. I've talked about that in another video, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go on to that now. But development in the mainstream market is way more beneficial for us all because mainstream also includes the low end stuff like the R7 360, the R7 370, the R9 and that's kind of the mainstream area. And for AMD to push the mainstream, well, that would just be insane. So yeah. Polaris 10 and Polaris 11 not necessarily being high-end might not be a bad thing. It doesn't mean that Polaris 10 and 11 aren't going to lead on to high-end things, e.g. Polaris 12, or updating the Fury, the Fury X line, and the Fury Nano line later on, because they have been out for less time. You have to remember, they did come out a piece after the 300 series. So that is basically all I have to say. This could be an insanely good thing, and hopefully we'll find out very soon, well, six months, seven months time when they release their GPUs, because believe you me, I'm going to work my backside off to make sure I can try and get some samples for you guys to get some really great videos. So take a look at it from another perspective. You ain't buying a 980 Ti, and you probably ain't buying a Titan X. So mainstream development is good because it will push prices down and performance up and force NVIDIA to compete. So AMD, you keep doing you. And I'll see you in the next Geek or What video.